Hi everyone, um, <clears throat> welcome to this video. Um, in this video, uh, we will be discussing um, an example of dimension analysis, um, which will basically be the uh, famous uh, analysis by Sergio Taylor on dimensional analysis of atomic bomb and how much energy uh, is released in the atomic bomb. So I had given this example last week, um, but um, it's not really a fluid mechanics example, it's more of like a dimensional analysis example. Uh, so I figured I'll create a supplementary video and I, I'll do both the methods, one uh, a method of inspection and the second a more formal derivation uh, using, um, you know, what uh, Nathan taught uh, about using, um, you know, different steps. So, so what is essentially the idea here? So what uh, G.I. Taylor and uh, a couple other scientists also noted is that when you have an atomic bomb releasing, there is sort of this um, radius of a cloud of the bomb, which forms. So there's sort of a cloud that forms. Um, and uh, so let's just maybe color this. This part is the cloud uh, and this forms. Uh, and there's some time, which is through which this cloud is increasing. And there is some energy within the bomb, E, uh, and there is some density of the, of the air or the cloud that is, uh, you know, um, that is uh, increasing. So these were the four variables that Sir G.I. Taylor used uh, in his analysis um, and said that we, he wanted to estimate energy using just dimensional analysis. And because there were already photographs of uh, radius of and time um, and density is known, the idea was to find um, using scaling analysis energy. Now you might consider, uh, well, why not viscosity or some other variables? And that's where really uh, understanding of the process comes in. Uh, that viscous, if this is a very large length scale, so these you know clouds are very large, uh, and um, so viscosity doesn't matter, um, surface tension or other properties won't matter. So this is the minimum model. Obviously, it's not like exact answers, but it gets gets you pretty close without a lot of work. Okay, so that is sort of the variable given to you. So you have energy, density, uh, radius, and time. Okay. So we know energy. So energy is force times distance. So um, kg meter per second square is uh, force. Kg meter square per second square is energy. So ml2 t minus 2. This is mass um, per unit volume. Kg. So this, let's just write it. Kg meter square per second square. Kg per meter cube. Radius is simply length. Um, so meters and this is time simply or seconds, right? So these are the SI units and the dimensions that we have. Um, so like this. Okay. Uh, and we want to essentially non dimensionalize it. Uh, so I'll first start with the method of inspection just because I find that um, sometimes to be useful to and sort of remember. So remember that we need energy. So we have we can take ratios of two energies. So to point pi. Oh, by the way, these are four, four dimensionless. So k is four. So four dimensional groups. Four dimensional groups. So k is equal to four. Um, three dimensions. Mass, length, and time. So k minus r is equal to one, or simply we will only have one dimensionless group, so which we will call pi. Okay, so we'll call that to be pi. Now, um, how do I go about it? So I want to create ratios of energy. That's as simple. We already have an energy, uh, and I want to create ratios of energy. Um, so that's one option. So we have E by we want to create something using using rho r and time and this is method of inspection inspection using rho r and time create energy right create energy so that's the that's sort of the idea here. So creating the row R in time, how do we create um, energy? So uh, we can remember that. Uh, so this is uh, some sort of you know we can start to remember these things. Is that um, 
when we think about uh, Bernoulli's equation, we think about conservation of energy. So in Bernoulli's equation, we had pressure plus rho u, rho u square by two plus you know gamma gamma z is equal to constant, right? And these were energy per unit volume. Energy per unit volume. So this is energy per unit volume, rho u square by two. And so u has a dimensions of uh, uh, distance over time, which is velocity, so distance over time. And then I also need volume. So what I'm saying is this will have the same units as rho of r by t whole square. Yes, so this is rho times velocity, r by t whole square. And then because I can only work with radius and time, I don't have velocity or anything. So I'm creating a velocity, radius per unit time square. And then I also need volume again, because I this is energy per unit volume, and I need energy. So I'll create R Q. Okay. So essentially, what we get is rho R by T whole square R Q. Okay. Uh, and we can check, you know, we can check whether this uh, does actually satisfy our um, dimensional balance. So the dimensions of this is mass length minus three times length square by T square times length cube. So this cancels out and you get ML2 T minus two, which is the dimensions of energy as you can see here, ML2 T minus two. Okay. This is essentially a pi without doing a lot of math. We can say pi is equal to E times rho r to the five t square. Okay. Uh, and um, finally, um, r to the five t square. And finally, you can say, and this pi is now a function of what? This is there is only one dimensionless group, right? So we said pi one is equal to the function of pi two or pi one is a function of pi two and pi three, but there's only pi. So the point is that this is some constant C one, which you don't know. Finally, this means that um, uh, radius or, or rather we can just, yeah, that's fine. We can say radius of radius is equal to E t square by rho C one to the power of one by five. And because radius was available as a function of time, we could estimate uh, 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 you know several points. There are several points. One can estimate e out of that out of that curve, um, and um, basically you are able to. Then one can evaluate the value of e. So that essentially sort of was an idea, and at least you can get a very good scale of you know what's going on in the system just by using dimensional analysis without any calculations of the mechanics of the atomic bomb or anything like that. Just by measuring the photographs, one could capture this. Uh, and this was the real power, just to show you the power of dimensional analysis, okay? So till now, again, we had four variables, energy, rho RT, we created energy using this method of inspection uh, and gives you, gives you an idea of how to get to this point. But now let's use the other method, which is the, the more formal method with six steps. So we already have the steps of, you know, one, um, Two, which is the second step is you know um, three, two parts right so one and two here and then we have how many variables we want to find is the three which is we, we, we know now we want to find the repeating and non-repeating variables so here it is pretty obvious because we want to find energy it is a repeating variable so we'll just write pi as uh, and there is only pi of one so it's very simple we can say energy dimensions to the power one, then rho to the power a, r to the power b, t to the power a. Okay. So this is essentially our, our formal approach. And so this is ML2 t minus two. Then I have uh, ML minus three to the exponent a. Then we have length to the exponent b. And then we have time to the exponent c, uh, and this is equal to m to the zero, l to the zero, t to the zero, right? Uh, so now we will compare. Um, we'll find exponents. Um, 
And so this might was the fifth step, I believe, and the sixth step of the stone mining. So we'll get essentially uh, one plus a is equal to, I believe is more than mass, is equal to zero. Then length is two minus three a plus b is equal to zero. And time in is minus two plus c is equal to zero. I believe that is correct. Uh, and so from here we get a is equal to minus one. This implies um, b is equal to minus five. And this implies c is equal to two. Right? Um, a is equal to not one minus one. I just wrote a typo here minus one. And so pi essentially becomes e by rho, which is in the denominator now r to the 5 e square and this is the same as the one we found using um, here the et square by rho r5 so it is the same so you can use either methods and both of them give you the same answer okay so hopefully this was a good example for you to see the power of dimension analysis and an example of how we can find uh, just by using dimension analysis dependencies of how radius of gene as a function of time density energy and so on uh, and using both the methods. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so look forward to seeing you in the next video. Um, and hope this video was helpful.